Hi everyone, how are you? It's Dr. Emily, functional podiatrist and human movement specialist, here to speak to you about three stretches that you can do to get a better plantar fascia release. Now, off to start is I normally like to do SMR or more of a massage pinpoint release to the bottom of the foot, but let's say you did a little bit of that release and you want to do some stretching because a very specific plantar fascial stretches have been shown in research to reduce plantar fasciitis symptoms. Now the secret here to getting a better plantar fascia stretch for plantar fasciitis is you got to get the big toe involved. Now just as a reminder for everyone, your plantar fascia runs from the base of your heels across your arch and it's going to insert into the base of every digit. Because it crosses the MPJ, that means when you extend your toes up, you will actually get a little bit of a stretch to your plantar fascia. Now for all of these stretches, your first step means you gotta put on your toe spacers. So toe spacers are definitely something I recommend to all of my plantar fasciitis patients. Toe spacers are a great way to start to stretch and open up the forefoot. And again, remember that the plantar fascia inserts into the base of the digits. So by stretching your digits, you are going to stretch your plantar fascia. So here we go. Your first stretch, once you got those spacers on, is going to be a toe extended. So I'm just going to use the table for the sake of demonstrating this, is that you want to extend Sorry. Now, the extension of the helix is based off of your range of motion, so be very careful. The range of motion that I'm showing right here, I could probably extend my big toe even more. It's not a competition to see how far you can extend your big toe, but you just wanna get a little bit of extension into that big toe, and then to start to get that stretch, I'm gonna bring my knee towards the table, so my Bending the knee is getting a soleus stretch and I would be here. So I'm stretching my plantar fascia and I'm stretching my soleus. This combination is one that based off of research shows can decrease plantar fasciitis symptoms. Now, if this is not giving you enough of a stretch, I'm gonna show you another way to get an effective stretch to the plantar fascia. The second way, still standing, is going to involve a wedge. So by, by using something that is wet, so right now I'm using a wedge and I'm propping all of my digits onto that. Now again, here, if I just bend forward, it's gonna be similar to what I did on the table. But what I wanna do is actually step forward. So now my leg is behind me and I'm stretching my posterior chain. In this position, I'm going to start to tuck my pelvis under, so I'm holding here, and I'm gently going to start to bend my back knee. Now, please always listen to your own body and to your feet. We don't wanna to push too far or cause any other stress to the connective tissue. And then I would extend straight up. So keeping the tuck in the pelvis, start to bend that knee. The wedge underneath my toes is extending that plantar fascia. So I get more than just a calf and soleus stretch, but I'm getting deeper into that plantar fascia tissue. That's your second one. Third one, I'm gonna go into a traditional one that a lot of people love to do. I love to do it at the gym, is that when I'm stretching at the gym, I'll put my legs out, grab a yoga strap, and maybe I'll do a stretch like this. Then I can kind of pull back. I can start to lean forward, I'm trying to keep that chest flat as I go forward versus rounding like this. So I'm here. Then your cigarette sauce to this is again, remembering that you're extending those digits back because by flexing the digits, you are bringing that plantar fascia into it. Now, all of these different stretches, it's about how long you are holding them. And I like to do any stretch such as any of these after doing a series of SMR and trigger point release. So I would probably precede this by doing a five minute neural ball release to the bottom of the foot, get my toe spacers on, and then go through a couple of these different stretches. Holding each of those stretches for 30 to 60 seconds and then repeating for several rounds. To top it off, you wanna make sure that you are very consistent with what you're doing, which means if you're doing several minutes of this every single day, I would suggest doing it a couple times a day, every single day, for at least two weeks to get the best results. Now to learn more, 
about how I treat patients and how to take care of your feet, head to dremilyspickle.com. And to learn more about how systemic enzymes can help reduce your plantar fascial symptoms, please visit stepstrong.com. Thank you guys so much. And get your toe spacers at Naboso.